this tutorial, I want to quickly demonstrate how we can perform a hill plot. And just as a reminder, a hill plot will be very uh, important when we have positive or negative cooperativity in an enzyme. So how do we know that we have cooperativity? Well, if we are looking at a normal Michaelis-Menten enzyme and we plot the substrate concentration versus the rate of the reaction for a normal Michaelis-Menten enzyme, we uh, will get this typical Michaelis-Menten graph like this. And uh, this is a hyperbolic curve. However, if we have some kind of cooperativity in the uh, enzyme, then we will find a sigmoidal curve like this, an S-shaped curve. And this is when we have positive uh, cooperativity. And of course, this also has a, a Vmax, uh, the sigmoidal curve, and we can also define half of Vmax as our Km. And uh, that would be the Km of the enzyme. Very often, this is also denoted as uh, K. 0.5 because that's the halfway point uh, but I want to be consistent and I want to call it km in this case. So how can we mathematically describe this curve and more to the point how do we find out this cooperativity? So uh, the uh, trick is basically to rewrite the Michaelis-Menten equation so we have v equals v max times S over Km plus S. That's our standard hyperbolic Michaelis-Menten equation that gives us the black curve in this graph. And the uh, extension of this Michaelis-Menten equation is the Hill equation. And what we need to do is we put in an factor or coefficient h to everything apart from Vmax. And this h is also known as the Hill coefficient. Hill coefficient, which tells us degree, the degree of cooperativity. And this was uh, developed by uh, the uh, by, by, I think, Edward Hill in the 1950s-60s, this equation. Okay, so how do we find this H? For that, we need to do a little bit of uh, algebra because we can uh, determine H, the Hill coefficient, uh, experimentally. And uh, what we need to do is we take this equation divided by Vmax, so we get V over Vmax, equals s to the power of h divided by km to the power of h plus s to the power of h. We then invert both sides and we get vmax over v. So that's the left-hand side inverted equals km to the power of h plus s to the power of h divided by s to the power of h. And we can split the fraction and we get km to the power of h divided by s to the power of h plus s to the power of h divided by, again, s to the power of h. And that, of course, equals 1. So we can write Vmax over V equals Km to the power of h divided by s to the power of h 
plus 1. Now we bring the 1 to the other side and we get Vmax over V minus 1. And instead of writing Vmax over V minus 1, we can also write equals Vmax minus V divided by V. And that is what we've got left on the right hand side. That is Km to the power of H divided by S to the power of H. We do yet another inversion of this equation. So we invert and invert this side as well. And now we get V over V max minus V equals, and we invert the right hand side as well, we've got S to the power of H divided by Km to the power of H. Okay, so what can we do with that? Now we can take both sides the logarithm of, so both sides logarithm, and actually it doesn't matter whether we take the logarithm to the base of 10 or uh, e or whatever, usually uh, it is uh, the base of 10, but it doesn't matter as long as you are consistent. So what we get on the left hand side is log of v over v max minus v equals log of this uh, fraction here, sh over km to the power of h. And we can do a little bit uh, with this right hand side. We know that the log of a fraction can also be written as log of s to the power of h minus log of km to the power of h. And we can order that uh, a slightly more neatly. We can say we've got log v over v max minus v equals, and instead of log of s to the power of h, with using the um, laws of logarithm, we can write equals h times log of the substrate concentration minus log of this expression here. We could, in theory, uh, take the h out as well, but uh, it might be even better to just keep it in km of h. And now we have, believe it or not, the line uh, a straight line uh, or the equation for a straight line. So this would be y equals mx plus c. And we can think about constructing actually what is known as the Hill plot. So what we can do is we can plot on the x-axis, we plot log over the concentration of S, our substrate concentration. And on the y-axis, we plot what we had on the right-hand side. So here we plot log of V divided by Vmax minus V. So if we plot that from our data, what we will find is a straight line if it is a strictly linear uh, hill coefficient. So this point here, that would be our negative log of km to the power of h. That's usually not terribly uh, interesting uh, if we uh, find that, or, well, we can use it to determine km. Um, 
if we so want. The more interesting part is, of course, is the gradient of this equation and or of this line. So this gradient here, because this gradient is our Hill coefficient, that is this h. And uh, this h tells us about the cooperativity of the enzyme uh, in terms of substrate binding. So we said that uh, uh, the Hill coefficient always has to be larger than zero. So if the Hill coefficient is uh, smaller than one, we have the effect of negative cooperativity. Activity. If the Hill coefficient is exactly one, then we have a typical michaelis menten enzyme. And if the Hill coefficient is larger than one, then we have positive cooperativity. And if we look at this uh, equation uh, here that we started with, if the Hill coefficient is one, then we just simply revert to the typical michaelis menten equation. The Hill coefficient itself basically tells us how steep this uh, increase is here in this S-shaped uh, part of the uh, curve where we have this particular re region here, how steep it is, how quickly it goes up. So this was uh, how we can derive this equation for the uh, Hill plot. So this is the Hill plot, uh, which allows us to find the uh, cooperativity, the Hill coefficient for an enzyme that shows cooperativity. I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.